<laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, welcome back to an episode of Rolling Bob. Boy, what a New Hampshire race. You know, it was turning out to be a pretty, you know, normal New Hampshire race. Um, you know, we didn't really have practice and seven lots practice. We had no qualifying. It was all set on some weird, odd matrix NASCAR has with like best finishing, where you finish, where you are in points, all this crap. Uh, I don't know. You know, Chase Evans on the pole. He done the first half of stage one, but then Christopher Bell came on strong and passed him. It was probably the best car there at the end of stage one. Wins stage one. You know, we saw Joey. What else? We get Chase, Ryan Blaney, Josh Berry, Martin Truex, Danny Hamlin, Ross Chastain, Ty Rennick, and Alex Bowman all end up top ten in stage one. And stage two kind of went the same way. Uh, with Christopher Bell kind of leading most of that stage. Um, and then Martin Truex was coming on strong. Uh, really, did. it was a joke. It was a really dominating first two stages, in my opinion, kind of. Uh, came on strong with pit cycle, kind of worked out. Dan Hamlin came really strong out of uh, stage two after their first pit stop in stage two. Their only really pit stop, and he was able then to work his way to the front. I think Christopher Bell locked up his tires one time there and allowed then um, to get the lead from Martin, I believe. And Martin, I think, went in the past for second. I don't know how. I can't remember at all. But then Denny ended up winning stage two, and at that same time, we had some rain going on. And we didn't know how, you know, it was, oh, 30 minutes, the rain's 30 minutes away, 45 minutes away, and lightning couldn't come sooner in this whole debate. And we had some wild restarts with the leaders. Uh, we had some strategy with Tyler He stayed out, and Michael McDowell stayed out on old tires. Hamlin was like, I don't know what, fifth, fourth on those restarts. And we had like, I don't know, like three, we had a bunch of cautions in between there, guys being desperate, making moves. And Rick was able to hold them off. And every restart, Every we only we only got you know five six green five laps green five laps excuse me before we got cautions, so we, we you know Hamlin was struggling to get to the front. I mean, he, well, he was in the front, but he was struggling to even get opportunities to pass Tyrant because we knew he was probably the best car at the moment, but it never worked out. And we ended up getting rain, and they came to pit road, and we kind of sat there for a good bit. Uh, it was weird because it they were expecting you know some big storms coming but it never really got super super heavy and people were you know all on social media like why are we not use, use the rain tires isn't that what the rain tires are for to you know you know they we, not downpour but if the track's a little bit wet a little damp let's use them and we're just sitting there and waiting and waiting and waiting and then, and it's like that's nascar is just waiting for a big spring storm to happen to then call the race and tyrant like he's he it's looking like tyrant team made the right decision by Staying out and gambling on this thing, and Denny Hamlin's frustrated. We also saw some freaking great battle there with freaking Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin's leaning on Kyle Larson. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm backtracking now, but we saw a great battle with them. Um, <laughs> Kyle Larson was freaking mad. Let me, where's the freaking comment? Kyle Larson's spire said, Hey, he runs you like that every time. You know why? Because he let you let it happen. N- number five spire. Kyle Larson says, Shut the F up. Uh, yeah, because Danny Hamlin was using up Kyle Larson, even though, you know, that, to me, I think Danny had the best car, and he didn't have time to wait around. Uh, he had to get there and have time to get to him, and he never really got the opportunity to so many cautions. But we're waiting this long, long red flag out. Everyone's scrolling on their phones, scrolling on X. I still like calling it Twitter, whatever. And it looks like NASCAR is waiting out. And they, oh, they are. And, oh, no, it's the TV window. You know, it's soon 6 o'clock. Any car's going to be on. It's, they're going to call it right then, right? They're going to wait all this time, but they never do. And all of a sudden, the rain stops, and we're going to throw on rain tires. Holy crap. How's this going to go? You know, how damn can the track be? And it literally just turned into a, the last 18 laps turned into another chaotic race. So we finally get rolling with these rain tires. And during caution, we saw some wild thing happen. Kyle Bush, Rex, during caution, just turn, going in turn three, normal cautions being, just just goes straight on him and just hits the wall. And he gets out, he gets mad. Right when they were about to, right when they went green and they had like a camera, camera cut to Kyle walking away or walking to the, around these bunch of cars that were parked. Looks like he shooed off the media because he didn't want to talk to him. I guess every time you get evaluated from the Info Care Center, you're, I guess, there's me there to talk to you. I guess he didn't want to because like he's yeah, we'll, we'll talk about them, but he's been a mess. Their team's been really just just a mess this year. But we get into it and we just see these restarts were unbelievable, spectacular. Cars all around, searching all around, a freaking eight wide, the whole track, the whole way below the yellow paint line. It was unbelievable. It was spectacular racing. We ended up seeing a couple of cautions early. Single car spins. We saw Rash Chastain spin just got loose. 
Uh, we also saw a seven spin another time. We saw him spin a couple of times. We saw a big, big pile up with the three, the 10, the two, the 23, 43. Um, pretty much no Gregson. He was going down in turn one real low, and there's a little paint strip down there. He, he All you see in the replay is tire hits that, and he just gets loose, comes up. And it was a hard impact for Rubble Loss. He was not mad. I think he kind of parked right in front of no Gregson in his pit box, pit box, excuse me. So he was mad. There was a lot of frustration. And every time these freaking, you know, we got a couple of restarts in, a couple of cautions, we're wondering, you know, is, or is the track dry enough to throw in slicks now? Because we didn't get there. But there, you know, and a lot of fans really, and, and drivers and, and, and crew chiefs really wished NASCAR gave the teams a chance to make decisions. But NASCAR felt like they had to kind of police it. And they didn't want to risk, you know, something catastrophic happening with a guy on slicks, threat, so and spins out, big wreck, whatever. So I was more on the side of letting the teams make the decision. But they never did. And I mean, we went through, I believe, and I'm going through all like three sets of rain tires, groove tires. Uh, we ended up getting to a point near the end of this race where the, where the track was a dr- somewhat dry enough, and the, the preferred lane was so dry that the tires were wearing out. And it was awesome. I mean, Kyle Larson was telling the crew that his one I think tire was almost down to had no thread left, no tread left. Uh, it was crazy. Chris Bell really felt like you know. Right off his first restart, he was in the most dominant car. He passed Tyrant and just kind of stayed controlled. And he really just had no match. We felt like Blaney had a chance there. But then when then Blaney gets freaking taken out there by freaking Michael McDowell making some die bomb desperate freaking move. So Blaney, we thought was the best guy to, to beat Christopher if we had a long enough run there. He gets taken out by Michael McDowell making some desperate move. It was a low percentage move, but Michael McDowell kind of said in his interviews, he apologized, said that I'm in a point now that he just has to make those moves. He doesn't have time to go and play nice next, which I understand. Makes sense, right? You're desperate. You're trying to win. You're trying to make the playoffs. Um, we had multiple restarts. We had our last restart, our last caution, I could say, was with Brad Kozlowski. He spun out, and it looks like NASCAR was like, we're coming down to with, like, I think, two laps to go. And he was trying to get it refired, but he couldn't. Uh, we, you know, we saw great re- restarts. Restarts were exciting. Um, we saw Stuart Haas, Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe was a lap down during this race. He was in, in the fight. Josh Berry, these Stuart Haas cars, man. It was a great, great ending. Uh, Kosh, it was a lot. Of, there was so much going on, though. But that NASCAR made us a freaking mess because the way that they, they were, like, there was a time there that we didn't even know if they were going to let teams change tires because teams were talking about, oh, I, I need a pit, man. My, my tires, my tread's gone. And they, didn't, they were going like to restart because NASCAR made the rule where you could do it. was when, once, if NASCAR didn't say you can change tires, you couldn't change tires. Now we run down our finishing order. Uh, Christopher Bell first, Chase Briscoe second, Josh Berry third, Kyle Larson fourth, Chris Buescher fifth. Great run for Jay, Chase Briscoe, Josh Berry Chris Buescher fit in there, good top five. Tyrant, a guy who, if the rain worked it out and the race got stuck because of the rain, would have been the winner. Uh, but they kept going, so it didn't work out for him. But still a great run. Ricky Stiles, top ten for that team. Great run for him. Jerry Nierchuk, then a great run. Top eight. Ninth, Martin Truex, a guy who was in position before the rain came and then had a bad pit stop and then got caught up with a couple wrecks. Not with Maybe not from him, but just wrong time. Wrong place type situation. Rush has staying 10th. 11th, Ryan Priest. 12th, Todd Gillen. 13th, Eric Jones. 14th, Harrison Burton. 15th, Michael McDowell. Great runs for those guys. 16th, Ty Gibbs. 17th, Cars Hosvar. Chase Elliott. 18th, 19th, Austin Sindrick. 20th, Ty, Ty Dillon. Great run, actually, for Ty Dillon there. I think it was that in the 19th, Austin Sindrick. And then the rest of the guys, you know, Denny Hammond, a guy that just didn't get it figured out with the rain. Um, sent up wise, and then Ryan Blaney, a guy who just got caught up with a Michael Brown doing a desperate move, ruins his day. Uh, William Byron, Noah Gregson, Burgess Elsie, those guys just didn't have it figured out. Set up wise, I don't know what was going on there, especially with Brad, who a guy who's been one of his best tracks, just missed the setup. Justin Halley, a guy who was could have run top five, West Carl Day, I don't know, had some issues during the end. I don't remember exactly what happened there, but really disappointed for him there. Um, and then, yeah. Rounding up, Zane Smith, Daniel Hammond, Joey Gow, Austin Dillon, Bill Wallace, Kyle Bush, Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman had an engine issue, and then Kyle Bush, you know, had just lost it in the rain, it looks like, under caution. Pace laps.
So we put the race on the rolling rate. We're going to go right to it. This race was interesting. First half was pretty typical, but then right when they threw the rain tires on, it was unbelievable. They were using all the racetrack, finding all the grip they possibly could find. It was like a dirt race. It was awesome. Now, did Dallas Car handle it the best way with not letting teams, giving teams the freedom of choosing? No, but they, they don't want anything crazy to happen. They don't want any injuries. I think moving forward, also having live pit stops, I think they should work on making sure pit road is the most dry. Make that the most dry area so you still have live pit stops, right? And give the teams a chance. If they want to throw slicks on, they can throw slicks on. If they want to throw another pair of wet winter tires, they can't. Let teams decide. I think they will do that in the future. My rolling rating will be 70%. Solid race. But I think the rain made it better, in my opinion. Um, I think we should just throw sprinklers. I have automatic sprinklers and wet in the track, right? No, we shouldn't do that. We should fix our car. That's what we should do. But I don't know. NASCAR still seems like they don't really want to make the big changes to, to do that. That's always the little changes, the easy changes. That still are what NASCAR is going off of. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought it's not a race. But besides that, like I always say, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Give me one of the noise of the race. And goodbye. <laughs>